All right, 25 in the circular motion problem set. So this problem involves centripetal force. Um, what we have is this table. We're told it's frictionless. Shh. There's a hole in the center where this rope goes through. <clears throat> and we have this suspended mass down here under the table, which the problem tells us is in <coughs> equilibrium right here. So remember, equilibrium means not accelerating. This mass hanging under the table is just at rest, okay? Now, what's keeping it at rest? The thing that's keeping it at rest is this puck up here on the table that's rotating around. Now, look, if this puck were not moving, if the puck were completely at rest, what would happen to this puck? It would get sucked into the hole, right? The string would just, you know, pull it to the center of the table. So... The thing that keeps the puck from going to the center is the fact that it's in motion, right? And the motion of the puck is keeping this suspended mass under the table at rest. So that's the setup. Now let's, let's label our info. We're given the radius of this circle. They tell us the radius of the circle is equal to one meter. The mass of the puck is 0.25. And the mass of this guy under the table is one kilogram. And I think that's all of our info. So first question, what is the tension in the string? All right, if you tried to find the tension in the string by focusing on the puck, you're not going to have any luck. There, there's, not, there's, not, there's not enough info, okay? The way we're going to find the tension in the string is by focusing on the guy hanging under the table. So if we look at the guy hanging under the table, we do a free body diagram. That's how you do force problems. Free body diagram, we have MG down, tension up, right? There's no normal force because it's not on a surface. Uh, what must these two forces be doing here if the mass under the table is just hanging there? They, 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 equal, each other. they equal each other. The forces cancel. So, so the super physics way to show this is you sum the forces, T minus MG, Sum of the forces always equals ma. Is this mass under the table accelerating? Nope. So the a goes to zero. So tension must be equal to mg. And that m is one. So it's one kilogram <coughs> times 9.8. So the tension in the rope is 9.8 newtons. That's tension in the rope. Okay, part b. What is the horizontal force acting on the puck? The horizontal force <laughs> acting on the puck. So if we look at this puck here, there's only one force acting in the horizontal direction. There's only one. What's the only force acting in the horizontal direction? Tension. And we already know what tension is. We just solved for it, right? The tension down here in this rope, we just found out that that tension down there is 9.8 newtons. So the tension up here must be 9.8 newtons because it's the same string. So the answer to part B is 9.8 newtons. The horizontal force is the tension equal to 9.8. Okay, part C, what is the speed of the puck? So to do this, so let's just do a, a free body diagram. So here's the puck. See if I can do a three-dimensional drawing. Not, that looks like a biscuit. A that looks like a muffin. That's not a puck. Come on, Spalding. Do a puck. I can't draw. Okay, you know what? We're going to make a box. Okay, there's the, there's the puck. Yeah, my art skills are pretty much zero. Here's the puck, okay? MG down. Uh, <clears throat> normal force up. It's on a surface. And then tension points that way. With over here, this dot right there represents the center of the circle. Okay, I, I did the free body diagram for the puck right there. And guys, it doesn't matter where the puck is when you do the free body diagram because the center of the circle, no matter where you do the free body diagram, you're going to make the center of the circle what? Positive. Because what always points to the center? The centripetal acceleration. So you could have done the free body diagram when the puck was over here. If the puck was over there, then your free body diagram would have looked like this. Normal force up, 
and then tension pointing that way. But it would have been the same thing because look, there's the center. The center is always positive. It doesn't matter. The center of the circle is always positive. Okay, so let's sum the forces. What's the only force in the x direction? Tension. Now, this tension has to be the centripetal force because it's the only force pointing to the center. Is mg pointing to the center? Uh-uh. In fact, it's pointing perpendicular away from, you know, it, it doesn't even have a component at all pointing towards the center. Does normal force point to the center? Uh-uh. In fact, it's perpendicular to the force that points to the center. So <clears throat> the sum of the forces in the x, it's only tension. Sum of the forces equals ma. This a is a centripetal, right? Because the centripetal acceleration is pointing to the center, <laughs> as is the tension. So what we do is we plug in the equation for centripetal acceleration right there. So we have T equals mv squared over r. So now we can solve for v. v, when you do the algebra, is going to be tr over m square rooted. So tension was 9.8. The mass of the puck is, oops, sorry, that's radius. The radius is one meter, and then the mass of the puck is 0.25. So then this comes out as 6.26 meter per second. The puck must be moving at 6.26 meters per second. Okay? And then the last question, hey, I just added this. Uh, what is the period of the puck? So what do we mean by period? The period is time for one complete cycle, which is one circle. Okay, so the way you're going to do this, the way you're going to find period, anything traveling in a circular path, velocity is circumference over period, right? Because look, what is velocity? It's distance over time. What's the distance around one circle? 2 pi r. What's the time for one circle? The period, which is capital T. So it's basically distance over time. So now the period is going to be 2 pi r over v. So 2 pi, the radius is 1. And then the velocity is 6.26 meter per second. And this comes out as exactly, right about exactly 1. Every second, the puck makes a revolution.